Okay. Well, this morning we're driving towards Moncton Up, Wimborne, which was the uh, residence of uh, the clubman George Hawes, who uh, was one of the leading clubmen in Dorset back in 1645. Now, Clubmen 1645 is the name of the website, and it's uh, well worth a visit. Right, here we are in a place called All Hallows. Now, All Hallows lies between Monkton Up Wimborne, where George Hall's the clubmen live, and Wimborne St. Giles, where the Earl of Shaftesbury lives. Now, the reason I stopped here is because A, the snowdrops are up and they look lovely. But I want to show you this old yew tree over here, which I believe is over a thousand years old. And it's something that George Hawes would have passed on his travels around Dorset back in the day. at Monkton Up Wimborne and in the background here is Manor Farm. Now Manor Farm was the home of George Halls and at the time there was nine of them living in this house which is quite unbelievable because it's quite small but George Halls would have gone with the clubman at the time to Dorchester to see Fairfax. Now Fairfax had arrived in Dorset back in July so George Halls, Thomas Ravel, Richard Newman, Thomas Young had all gone to Dorchester to see Fairfax and, and air their grievances at the time and put their what their worries were about the new model army now setting up garrisons in this area. Fairfax had agreed to meet with the clubmen on advice from Colonel Sidman, the Governor of Weymouth, who advised them about the strength of the clubmen in this area. So Fairfax, feeling it was wise to meet with them and hear their grievances, agreed to meet with them on their terms. Now, not all of Fairfax's army agreed with them. Now, there's a Mr. Bowles here, who was, the, who was the chaplain at the time to Fairfax, who said um, they would not know reason till it was beaten into them, which I think is a tad harsh. George Hawes and the club were meeting Fairfax in Dorchester. They gave a deputation to him with their demands on the, on, the, on the army in this area. Now, I'm not going to talk about that now. I'm going to talk about that when we get to Dorchester because it's a really long piece of legal paper and I'd be here forever reading that out. But there's an interesting thing about Thomas Hall when he was talking to, the, to, to Fairfax. There's a note here from a scribe at the time. It says, he was most preemptory and insolent in his carriage. And but for his being sent as a messenger, he had been committed as this man is the head of that giddy head faction in Dorset. A nice sort of footnote regarding George Halls regards his son Thomas Halls. Now Thomas Halls became very good friend with John Wildman, the leveller, and together they started up a cooperous mine, well bought a cooperous mine on Bramsey Island. Now cooperous is the ingredient they add to ink, so the legal documentation being written in the 1650s onwards with that ink, with Thomas Hall's hand in it, gives us a sort of like obscure link with George Hall's father with the clubmen, which I think's quite fitting. <laughs> 